Sheena Gibbs disappeared on November 8th, 2021. I sent a dire message to her. Sheena, are you okay? I'm really worried about you. I haven't heard from you. You're not returning my calls. Are you all right? I felt alarmed because you just never think that this kind of thing could happen to someone you know. Her family is desperate for answers. Was there some kind of connection that the boyfriend had? What does it mean when you have someone you're close to that you're hiding from the rest of the people that you're close to? Someone took her against her will or she's in trouble somewhere. This episode of Disappear retraces Sheena's last known steps. Chicago can be one of the most beautiful places on earth, but it also can be very dangerous. I find it weird that they said that Sheena was at a Greenleaf hostel. I can't see my friend being here. The mystery seems to grow as the case grows colder. There are so many unknowns. This whole time I just had so much hope because she's a fighter. She ain't dead to me. I, I have no reason to think she's dead because we don't get her. Just find her. The more people who know Sheena's story, the greater the chance of bringing her home. Share on social media. Get the word out. Help find her. Have you seen Sheena Gibbs? Sheena Gibbs disappeared in Chicago, Illinois in early November 2021. And she's still missing. My name is Bethany and Sheena Gibbs is my friend. I've known Sheena for over 20 years. Sheena was living in Chicago, Illinois, but she's actually from a small town in Iowa. My name is Lolita Kelly and Sheena Gibbs and I have been friends since we were children. I moved to Muscatine, Iowa in 1991. I was in the seventh grade and Sheena was in the six. That's how we met. We were both 11 years old. We just loved each other. From the time we met each other, we just never missed a beat. We did everything together. We would go down to the Mississippi and skip rocks in the water. We loved the library, so we loved to read. We used to get in trouble a little bit too, but overall, everything we did, it was just always fun. She loved to dance. She loved that, those African dancers college. She said that was really fun. She she really liked that. I met Sheena in the early 2000s at college in Chicago. We were both in a psychology class together and she was this beautiful tall woman who carried this energy and was wearing a bright yellow shirt that said I am black history. And I was wearing uh, my Malcolm X shirt and we both kind of just gravitated toward each other after class. She and I ended up starting a psychology club there and just spending a lot of time together and kind of forming this cluster of friends. My name is Sarah. Sheena Gibbs is my friend. I met Sheena in college. There was a group of us. We would study together, hang out on the beach, play board games, go to Moody's Pub, which is a has a great burger in Chicago. We sort of connected because Sheena had a passion for African culture. My first husband was African, so we sort of connected over that. We spent a lot of nights on the beach talking about our hopes and dreams, what type of careers we wanted to have, love, adventures, all kinds of things. For Sheena, the importance for her future was about giving back to this earth and to people. She's always been focused on finding a way to serve people who are suffering and marginalized communities. And that's why she picked anthropology and social sciences to study in school. She's super smart, super, always was super smart since I met her. She did all kinds of jobs. Sheena is definitely a motivator. Sheena's mom fell seriously ill in the fall of 2021. Her mom made 
needed some help. And so she had already worked as a home health care worker. And so to her, the natural solution was to go to Iowa to care for her mom. She loved her family. She knew her mom didn't want to be in a nursing home. Gina was the one that helped her mom. Sheena had traveled back and forth from Chicago to Iowa to care for her mom, and she was considering relocating to Iowa. At that time, the majority of our communication was via text or phone call or Facebook. But gradually, I started noticing Sheena wasn't really calling me back when I would call. So after two or three times of this, a couple pattern for her not to call back. So finally in October of 2021, I sent like a dire message to her. Sheena, are you okay? I'm really worried about you. I haven't heard from you. You're not returning my calls. Are you all right? And then I would say within two or three days, she responded and she was like, oh yeah, sorry, I've been busy. And how are you doing? So I thought, oh, okay, she's all right. She's fine, she's just been busy. People get busy and things happen. I know Sheena was busy traveling back and forth from Iowa to Chicago, taking care of her mom, but there was something very abnormal about the lack of communication. And I wasn't the only one that noticed it. The second week of November of 2021, I was at home doing some work on the computer and I saw a message from someone I didn't know asking if I had talked with Sheena recently and saying that Sheena was missing. And I was confused and thought this is some kind of weird joke, but I will copy this message and send it to Sheena so if she knows this person, she can reassure them. And so that's what I did. I didn't really think too much of it because you just never think that this kind of thing could happen to someone you know. I didn't hear back from Sheena. And then I got a call from her aunt. And she told me she had been missing. I felt alarmed, but also some disbelief. I didn't really think it could that she's really missing and just seemed like some sort of miscommunication or misunderstanding. So I called her, texted her, and messaged her, and eventually it became real that she really was missing and this was serious and scary. I was having dinner with my family when I got the call from a friend that Sheena was missing. At first, I just kept thinking there had to be some kind of mistake. But then I started thinking about how she had sort of been distancing herself a little bit and not returning phone calls as much. But Sheena's not someone who would just go missing. Sheena's aunt told us that she had taken the bus back to Chicago from Iowa November 1st. Sheena was supposed to take the bus back to Iowa a couple days later on November 8th, but Sheena never came back to Iowa. We weren't sure if she had even made it back to Chicago or not. Swan notified the Chicago Police Department November 8th, shortly after they could not get a hold of her, and filed a missing persons report. The police department in Iowa was also notified because we weren't sure had she made it back to Iowa or not. Both police stations were notified. My name is Linda Cook and I am a reporter for WHBF in Rock Island, Illinois. I've been covering missing persons cases for quite some time. One of the missing cases I focused on is Sheena's missing person case. It's believed that Sheena went missing in early November of 2021. The case was difficult for me to follow. I think it's been difficult for everyone, including officials to follow, because Sheena's movements from November of that year really aren't very clear. In late October 2021, we know she was with her family in Iowa. Her family thinks Sheena made it back to Chicago November 1st, but even that can't be ascertained for sure. No one really knows what her movements were. You have two different states, you have two different counties. It would be a massive, massive initiative to put all of that 
together for one huge hunt. At this point, her friends and family are considering that Sheena could be literally anywhere. How do you go missing? You've been in Chicago all these years. Right when you finna come home, right when you finna come back to where you are from. So I just find that very strange. And I feel so bad because I'm like, why didn't I not talk to her in two weeks? Like, we talked so much. It's like the couple weeks that I didn't talk to you, now you miss it. What the heck? That just hurts my heart to the bone. I think I was in shock. I was in disbelief. I still find myself in disbelief sometimes. And my mind went to, what do I need to do? What do we need to do to find her? She lives in Chicago, it shouldn't be that difficult. But because Sheena had grown more distant in 2020, 2021, we did not have any leads. I had heard that Sheena had a boyfriend in 2021 that she was staying with. I hadn't met him, but that was what I had heard from mutual friends. I think maybe she knew we might not approve of her boyfriend. I think Gina was dating someone before she went missing. I don't know if that relationship was ongoing at the time she went missing, because it sounds like it was on and off. But I didn't know the name of this person or how to contact them, any contact information. She kept that part of her life very... I mean, when you have someone you're close to that you're hiding from the rest of the people that you're close to, was there some kind of connection that the boyfriend had that she was trying to hide? About two weeks after she went missing, I'm thinking time is ticking and Sheena is likely suffering or in danger and we need to find out if there's any other relevant information about her boyfriend. Years before she went missing, Sheena was diagnosed with cancer at 25. So it was a really difficult time for her, but she was determined to fight it, to push through. She was diagnosed with cervical cancer. She went through a very long and difficult battle with chemo and radiation, and she was pretty much on her own in Chicago through all this. Sheena was able to get a hysterectomy, and after a couple of years, Sheena finally went into remission. When we were 26, had to get that hysterectomy. So she knew like right then, hey, I, I'm not never gonna be able to have kids. That was the only thing that probably set her down for a second. I think going through that battle with cancer did take a toll on her emotionally. And then beyond that, it may have left her a little depressed or emotionally taxed. And it was a slow process to regain her strength after that experience. Something did change after her battle with cancer, and I think she felt a part of her was maybe damaged beyond repair. Over time, after her cancer diagnosis, I noticed that the caliber of men that she was dating seemed to be a little bit more questionable. Her previous boyfriends that I knew had been really, really awesome guys. But after diagnosis. I wasn't sure why she was making the choices she was making. I have a feeling she didn't have great self-esteem at that time. Before Sheena disappeared, after her cancer diagnosis, one day when I was at her house, she was talking to me about a boyfriend she was dating at that time, and she had told me that they had gotten into an altercation. I think a mug had been thrown. It raised a red flag, and I said, that's concerning. I'm worried about your welfare. And I started becoming increased about the guys she was dating. The last time I saw Sheena was in June of 2021. She was living with her new boyfriend at the time. And there had been an altercation or disruption. She came to my house and she was pretty upset and needed a 
hours to talk and calm her nerves. A couple of weeks after she came to my house, I sent her a text just asking if everything was okay and the situation had gotten any better. And she sent a message back that she was fine and she was grateful that I could be there for her. I believe that relationship was tapering down, but I don't know. We realized that we knew she had this boyfriend, but we didn't know anything about him. No name, phone number, address. We needed him to help us, trying to figure out what's going on, trying to find out where Sheena is. Most of the time, when there's a disappearance, police look at those closest to the victim first. And often, suspects or persons of interest are family members, whether they are spouses, boyfriends, sons, daughters. It's possible Sheena was living with a boyfriend in the summer of 2021, and that possibly the relationship had become toxic, but we don't know this for sure. Domestic violence is also a possibility. Statistically, out of domestic violence murders, 70% are women who are murdered. And out of all female murders, 45% are murdered by someone they know, an intimate partner. So we passed along that she may have been dating someone to the police, and that it seemed she may have been scared. Her latest boyfriend was the one that she, she obviously really liked him. It seemed like she really liked him. Now, I figured maybe he was controlling. He was always barred. Like, you know, how we talking on the phone. Her conversation's kind of short enough. But she didn't ever say anything wrong about that boy. Only thing weird to me about him, from my own personal view, is I just couldn't understand why he didn't reach out. That was my whole thing. I said to myself, it just seemed like it was too obvious to be. And they're not saying that it's not. Person of interest is one thing. The suspect is another. And there has been nothing. There's still not enough evidence to lead police to a person of interest. At this point, we don't have any new leads. Or if the police do, they're not sharing with us. We don't know if the police were following up on the tips I was giving them. I'm feeling angry with police, with wanting to figure out what to do, how to solve this, and get Sheena back home. It seems like every element of this case that's known creates a thousand more that are not, and the mystery seems to grow as the case grows colder. Sometimes in cases of disappearance, domestic violence is a factor. Now that's not necessarily meaning that there was violence that resulted in a death, sometimes people leave on their own to get away from the situation. We have to leave that open too. Is it possible Sheena is missing by her own choice? Sheena is not the type of person to run from problems or challenges or anything, to be honest. I don't see her running away. Her community was here, her family was nearby, and she loved both of those things. I definitely ruled out the possibility that Sheena ran away. Didn't happen. Sheena will never give up. She's a fighter. Someone asked me if I think maybe Sheena was scared and she's in hiding or she ran away. But I actually believe, knowing Sheena, that she could have gotten herself into deep trouble by facing things head on not running away because that was Sheena. Sheena always took things head on. I think Sheena did not leave voluntarily. I think someone took her against her will or she's in trouble somewhere. I think Sheena would not be away from her family and friends by choice. So at the end of November, I'm feeling devastated for Sheila's family, devastated for myself, a lot of pain in my heart, missing my friend. I know Sheena was living on the north side of Chicago, but I didn't know exactly where my spouse and I were kind of the people on the ground in Chicago to help with the investigation. I also know that police don't put up flyers. They rely on family and friends to do that. So that's where we started. We put up flyers in Rogers Park 
Pacific and surrounding communities because we knew Sheena was living around that area at the time. If Sheena made it back to Chicago, she would be staying here. So we also created an email for tips as along with the police phone number. And we put those up all over. After that, we started getting a lot of emails and questions from friends and people. Any tips we received, we forwarded to police in hopes that they would act on them. While we were looking for Sheena, a friend found out that she had had contact or sort of become friends with an Uber driver. We realized that he would be an important person to talk to. He might have more information about Sheena's whereabouts. He had given her rides to different places. They had also met up for lunch a few times. And when I first called him, he had said he'd last seen her about a month ago. In early November, he had dropped her off at a hotel called Green Leaf. And she told him she's going back to Iowa the next day. This was right before Sheena disappeared. We were really excited about this rideshare driver because we didn't know where she was. But now we have information that's pinpointing her whereabouts that November. Up until this point, we didn't know if she had made it back to Chicago. So we had a solid lead. We knew where she was staying. So it was a really good sign. I contacted the owners of Greenleaf Hotel and they were able to confirm that Sheena stayed there the days before she went missing. Sheena was staying at the Greenleaf house November 1st through 5th, 2021. That would also confirm that she made it back to Chicago from Iowa. I believe Sheena was living with her boyfriend, so I'm not sure why she was at that hotel. I find it weird that they said that Sheena was at a Greenleaf hostel. I can't see my friend being here. This ain't stuff that Sheena do, you know what I'm saying? Like, that looked like a little boarding house or something. Sheena would have got a real hotel. So it's like y'all trying to place her somewhere and put this story on her like she was a prostitute or like this is the kind of life she lived. I'm like, that ain't Sheena. It's confirmed that Sheena checked out of the hotel on the 5th, but we don't know where she was after that. What happened? How could this happen? Where is she? How can I find her? We were able to get the information from the hotel manager to get in contact with people who had stayed at the Greenleaf house in early November when Sheena had stayed there. We spoke to several people and only one remembered Sheena. The man that remembered Sheena was Nigerian and Sheena had a passion for African culture. So there could have been a connection there and they could have really talked and that could be why this person remembered her. And they also was odd. Why would you be aware of where the cameras are and that there's camera footage? It seemed a little out of the ordinary, to say the least. Was he asking about the camera footage because that might show what happened to Sheena? We needed to see that footage. The hotel owner mentioned that there is security cameras in the common areas of the hotel. I feel like seeing footage of Sheena on her final days before she went missing would be very crucial to this investigation. This whole time I just had so much hope because if something is wrong, Sheena is definitely a fighter. So if we find Sheena, we'll know what happened to her. At this point, we have no idea what happened to Sheena. We're just hoping that this video footage will give us a clue. But the footage could only be obtained if the police requested the footage. So there's a possibility now to see where Sheena was, when she was there, who she was there with, what was happening. Sheena didn't just disappear. Something happened to Sheena. Sheena Gibbs was last seen November 8th, 2021. If you have any information, please contact the Chicago Police Department, Area 3 SVU, at 312-744-8266. On December 17th, I called the detective and left.
let her know that the Greenleaf Hotel had security cameras. Unfortunately, we found out that the footage would only be kept for 60 days. The police tried to follow up on the surveillance footage, but by the time they got there to follow up, it was gone. I think having this footage of Sheena would have revealed something about the case, something about what was on her mind or how she was feeling or who she was with even. We don't know, and this footage is now gone forever. And I'm steady calling Chicago Police Department. I just never got nowhere. I try to just keep it to myself. You know, I get a little angry when I talk about that because it just makes me angry sometimes. You know, I just I get upset. I have a lot of respect for the police. They're doing a job, and it's not an easy one. I would not want to do their job. That being said, in my opinion, there was gross negligence in this case. This footage could have provided answers, but now we'll never know. I know the police are very busy, and I know they're likely understaffed, but it really felt like uh, the detecting than the actual detectives. I feel really angry that police did not take action. I wish they had contacted the hotel sooner. Everything that we learned about Sheena, we always passed on to the detective to make sure that they had any and every possible lead that could be helpful. But I felt like the police had given up hope. I felt like if the police aren't looking for Sheena, who's going to be looking for Sheena? Chicago can be one of the most beautiful places on earth, but it also can be very dangerous. In 2021, 3,000 black and brown women went missing in Chicago that we know of. If the police did only that, maybe they could make a dent in those numbers, but they have so many other things to do that have to be done right away. Black women and girls make up more than a third of the nation's missing person cases. Mayor Lori Lightfoot saw the numbers, listened to the victims, and determined that fighting this shadow pandemic would require the full force of city government, not simply the cops and courts. Think about the state of policing right now. Police officers are few and far between, so there are fewer officers addressing what we call breaking news, whether it's a robbery, a burglary, a shooting. And those things that need to be addressed now make everything else take a back burner. I understand the police are overworked. I understand a lot of black and brown people go missing. I get it. But dude, do your job. Like seriously, just do your job. I have, let's say, some unresolved anger at this point. It's a problem. It's a problem. It's a problem. angry and frustrated that I could not get police to follow up on these tips. That's when we realized we need to take things further and maybe the police don't have the resources or is not as invested in following up on this case as we once thought. So we tried to just take action to get people with higher status and, and higher publicity on board for Sheena's case. And we found the elder woman of the Rogers Park area. My name's Maria. She went missing November 8th, 2021. When Sheena went missing, her friends were very much involved in trying to elevate the case. A lot of times our detectives are overwhelmed with caseloads and it can be difficult for them to prioritize and they're being pulled in a lot of different directions. And so sometimes also an older person or other community advocate reach out offering to help bringing more attention or being a person that can help coordinate even that contact can make a really big difference alder woman maria Haddon has been very helpful in stepping forward and trying to get things rolling when the alder woman responded she was able to put some pressure and get things going on sheena's case a little bit more eventually they did change the detective so that was good 
that's when we start getting a couple responses from Chicago Police Department. That's when they act like, okay, we're going to act to be involved. They didn't have like four different detectives on this case that do nothing at all. Maybe because I watch all these channel all the time. I said, and you watch these things and it'd be that one cop that come that be really serious. It's this one detective that's like, I won't stop until I find him. About seven months after she had disappeared to bring attention and bring awareness to Sheena's plight, older woman Maria Haddon and artist Damon Lamar Reed we were able to put together an event where he created a beautiful mural of Sheena and we were able to bring awareness to the fact that she was missing. Damon Lamar Reed is part of the Still Searching Project and he painted the mural on the side of the Glenwood Bar in Rogers Park. You know, love Rogers Park and the Glenwood Bar. We're so grateful they opened their business up for this opportunity and to aid the cause in finding Sheena. Sheena Gibbs was last seen here in Rogers Park late last year. Her family hopes this mural will bring renewed attention to her case. This mural of Sheena was unveiled on May 22nd, 2022. Friends and family attended, the community attended, and it was really a beautiful event. He ended up painting a beautiful mural of Sheena, and there was a lot of media attention surrounding that, so that took the efforts and the action a step further. The day of the mural commemoration, dozens more people learned Sheena's story, and that mural is there so that people still know she's missing and it contains information how you can get in contact so we had different tips come in because of the mural it was really really amazing to see that people still cared so on june of 2022 the police started asking if sheena had any friends or associates in the winthrop harbor area in illinois because that was the last known ping on her cell phone on November 8th, 2021, which is the day she disappeared. My understanding is that it took seven months for them to trace her phone. Something that I feel should have been done a lot sooner, but something that was probably being done at this point because of Alderwoman Maria Haddon and pressure that was being put politically on the police department. So when I got the call about Winthrop Harbor, I looked it up on Google Maps. I'd never heard of it, never been there, didn't know of any connection to Sheena to that area, but I saw that it was quite a drive away, about a couple hours away from Chicago. So I really was surprised that her phone had surfaced so far away. Police discovered that Sheena's phone had pinged in Winthrop Harbor. But just because it pinged there doesn't mean that's where she was. I just felt like, well, maybe we're finally getting somewhere. Maybe with this Winthrop Harbor thing and her cell phone, maybe that we're going to find something. Maybe something new is going to pop up. So I was sort of, in a way, almost optimistic because it was a lead. Oh my God, Sheena, where are you? She ain't dead to me. I, I have no reason to think she's dead because we don't got her. Just find her. In late August, they announced that there would be a search in that area in September of 2022. Learning about the ground search was actually comforting and in the fact that it showed me that police were still interested and were still working on this case and finding Sheena. Finally, we were finding a way to move forward. The police were requesting volunteers. They are going to do a search of the area in Winthrop Harbor, where Sheena's phone had last pink and the surrounding areas. The Winthrop Harbor search occurred on September 6, 2022. A group of us came out to search for Sheena or anything that could have belonged to Sheena. They told us if you find anything in the woods that could belong to a woman or belong to Sheena, pull it out so they can let the dogs sniff it. So they went through several wooded areas with dogs and we went through wooded areas. 
electronics recycling plant, which is where they thought the phone might have been tossed. The whole search took about six hours. It's my understanding that they never found the phone because the phones there are destroyed fairly quickly after three days or something. I don't believe they discovered anything on that search. If the police did find something, they haven't released any information about it. After the search, I spoke with the detective and I asked her, can you tell us when is the last time that Sheena was with her phone that we know she texted on it or she called on it? Was she with her phone in Winthrop Harbor? And the detective said, we don't know. The last known time we have Sheena utilizing the phone was November 8th, 2021 in Chicago. So it's unclear whether Sheena had ever been there herself, whether it was just her cell phone that was there, especially with so much time having passed between her disappearance and the ping of this phone. I think there were some hopes, but some slim hopes of maybe this being a good lead. And after the search, it seemed like that lead also was a dead end. So we have no way of knowing if the phone was in Sheena's hand when it pinged or if it had been tossed there. In my opinion, oftentimes the most likely scenario is the most obvious scenario. I think that if she was in a toxic relationship, that needs to be looked at. I know that recently some folks think that Sheena's disappearance might be related to some gang involvement that allegedly her boyfriend was involved in. Maybe he's just one of those hood, you know, one of them hood people that's just, I don't mess with the police, you know, because I'm thinking that's what type of person he is. Because I know people like that. I, I grow up in hood. What we think of as gangs are, are really small, block by block, cliques almost. And more commonly, especially in a neighborhood like Rogers Park, a lot of it's really low level. In my personal opinion, I think it's unlikely gang involvement has a role specifically in her disappearance. Gangs are everywhere. They're certainly in Chicago. Now, do we know that there's a gang-related element to this case? Absolutely not, but we can't rule that out. So it's been over a year since Sheena's been missing. We don't have any new leads, or if the police do, they're not sharing with us. But we won't give up, and we remain hopeful that we'll find Sheena. The problem with cases like this is that there are so many unknowns. She could have disappeared on her own. She could have been a victim of foul play. She could have decided to leave and go somewhere with someone who we don't even know about. This is such a mystery because not only are we dealing with so few real confirmed facts, but also we're dealing with a huge metropolitan area where anyone can get lost and disappear. I think that I want the world to know that Sheena is a great person, independent. Just don't give up on her, please. She's counting on us. I know Sheena is waiting on us to find her. She's waiting on us to find her, just bring her home. There's a very intense, prolonged form of grief that happens when someone you love is missing. And it's like a stabbing pain that just doesn't go away and torments you in your sleep, in your dreams, in your waking hours. And it's just unconsolable and so frustrating. I would like to say, if anybody knows anything about where Sheena was prior to her disappearance or after, please, please reach out. It could make all the difference, even if it seems little. Please reach out and let us know. Think of if your sister or your mother or your friend went missing. We know that there's a lot of information out there about Sheena still to be discovered. And if anyone has any kind of knowledge about Sheena, even if they think it's insignificant, please contact Chicago SVU. If I could see Sheena again, I don't think I could even talk. I would hug her first, and I would probably just break down crying. And then I would just tell her I love her. If I could see 
Christina, I would hug her so hard um, and tell her I love her and just to never go away again. <laughs> One day, Alex told me that he was leaving for Kauai. We thought, what if he did get involved into a cult? We're going to go to Hawaii now and look for our friend. That island is scary and dangerous. This is not some fun adventure. This is life 